I've just been watching um, some of Annie Elise's. I've never watched her, any of her videos before, actually. Um, and I probably won't be watching them after the arrest, but I like, of Brian Koberger, but I like to look at old, the footage from prior to the arrest and where people were going with things and what information came out. And to be honest, somebody told me that it was Annie Elise who said that um, Kaylee had been and... Uh, um, I was going to say uh, trigger warning, but I think you've probably all heard this a million times. Annie Elise, who said that Kaylee had been stabbed over 50 times. And so I'm trying to find, I haven't found it yet. So if you know which episode it was, please tell me. Because otherwise I'm going to have to look through quite a lot. Um... I don't like it. I, I'm, um, I'm not keen on Annie Elise's style, to be honest, because it's very storytelling. So it's sort of filling in the blanks. Uh, and I used to enjoy that sort of thing. But now I realise that it kind of... It's, it's, there's a little bit of embellishment and not, not massive, but I prefer just to have be given facts now rather than have a story told to me um, and also she seems like she might have been asked to because obviously law info they'd be stupid not to use um, YouTube and get popular YouTubers to say sort of ask the right I mean she's ask the right questions and um, not ask the wrong ones and to um, put out information and to request information. She's doing that. It's like she's been asked to request information. Um, she's almost saying it like she's an official person, like old uh, Banfield. I still can't get over the fact her name's Banfield and cause I didn't know before Bam before I knew about Banfield. So uh, the two have co coincided uh, comically for me. Uh, dark comedy. Um, yeah, so here, so I, then I end up looking at, obviously, on the way I get sidetracked and she's talking about a post by... An Instagram post, I think it's Instagram, by Autumn Gonzalez, Kaylee's, one of Kaylee's younger sisters. Um, Aubrey's the other one. Uh, so I'm just going to get her to kind of introduce it here and then I'm going to just sort of make my point about it. Now, the younger sister of Kaylee has urged students to leave town and has also cast doubt on the police description of these murders as an isolated and targeted attack. She posted this on Instagram. No one is in custody. Okay. I think this was actually written by Steve um, because it uses words that he said to be honest, I couldn't remember if it was him or if it was Olivia that said it. But I don't see why Olivia wouldn't just post herself. She's been, she has posted online. But Steve knows that <laughs> no one's going to necessarily see his post. He doesn't want to be, well, he doesn't want to be getting involved in that way. It doesn't look good, does it? But I think that he said this and Autumn let him use her account. That's what I suspect. Unless she's just repeated things that he said. So she says, it's a bit further down, so I'll come to it. I cannot stress this enough. Please call in any information you have to this number. 
even if you think it's being called in, that it is nothing serious or that it had nothing to do with my sister's and their friends call it in. If you have friends, family or loved one in loved ones in Moscow, our family encourages you to get them home. Police say isolated targeted attack. But it is isolated until it isn't. No one is in custody, therefore no one is safe. Whoever did this to my sisters, Kaylee and Maddie, Zana and Ethan is still out there. And if he's sick enough to murder four sweet, innocent humans so brutally, he's sick enough to do it. Do it. It's not finished, is it? Hold on. I'm wondering if the bit that's cut off, because I because that none of that does ring a bell. This is from Annie Elise's video. Let me just see if she's cut some of it off. Um, which video is, must be this one. Now, the younger sister of Kaylee has urged students to leave town and has also cast doubt on the police. Um, and just to say that you probably already know that Kaylee has two younger sisters, Autumn and Aubrey. And interestingly, Aubrey doesn't live. She lives far away somewhere. Um... Her social media is interesting. Um, yeah, she looks a lot like Kaylee, actually. This description of these murders as an isolated and targeted attack. She posted this on Instagram. No one is in custody and therefore no one is safe. Whoever did this is still out there. And if he is sick enough to murder four sweet, innocent humans so brutally, he is sick enough to do it to anyone. She also revealed that the family was shocked by the sheer brutality of the murders. Our family was dreading the answer for how, and we all knew that no matter the answer, we wouldn't like it. But we got back the worst possible answer, the most gruesome way. Yeah, it doesn't, you can't read that on there. She's reading something that you can't actually see on the screen. One person against four. This person is dangerous and he is not in custody. How police say no. This person is dangerous. I I don't, I mean, did everybody just assume from the beginning that it was one person? Is it just the way it's been, like, the leakage, there's been leakage. Um, has there been suggestion from the beginning that it's one person? Because, let me rewind it a bit. He's dangerous and he is not person against four. This person is dangerous and he is not in custody. This person is dangerous and he's not in custody. She could just be making an assumption. But Steve also says, let's just listen to this bit and then I'll show you what Steve says. How police say no threat makes no sense. My sisters did everything right. That's it. My sisters did everything right. I mean, I don't know if they've all just been saying that, but that's so familiar. My sisters did everything right. It could even be Olivia that said it, and maybe she's just repeating it verbatim. But I do suspect that Steve may have encouraged her to do this, and she may not have done it off her own back. Um, and he might have wanted information put out there. And he obviously wouldn't want to be. And this might be why they are, the police said that they weren't going to talk to him anymore. Because they could, they had, you know, this goes out to the media. And then they're starting to feel a bit twitchy because he knows more information and what else could he leak? My sisters did everything right. They went out together. They locked their doors. Clear. Well, that's, isn't that part of that speech? They did everything right. They, they, and in the end, they died together. It's a bit like that's, I don't know if that's part of the speech or if the, he's definitely said it in an interview, might have said it in the speech as well at the vigil. Really just an interview, Kaylee's dad, Steve, stated that the police let him know that they wouldn't be updating him as much as they previously had done moving forward. He said that the last time that he got an update was the Wednesday before Thanksgiving that they pretty much told him that they couldn't tell him too much. And her dad was a little frustrated because he said that he has been trustworthy and has kept his lips sealed on... And now he's like, no, I'm going to tell everybody that I've been told information. You're not keeping your lips sealed now. You're telling 
people that you've been told information and that is not good that they would be sharing information with any family members or anybody of the general public it's putting a case at risk and it's unprofessional it it's it's not fair to anyone it's not fair it's it's not fair to the other families it's not fair to the accused um who are you to be receiving extra information i mean any family member would want it but to complain that you didn't get it um, surely you know the rules i i have a sneaky suspicion that steve has a former role that would make him feel more entitled to the rules i think he's ex-military and I've seen something in his background check that suggests that he's ex-military. A lot of information the police has told him. So Steve and his family are frustrated because they were the family that first came to speak. The first ones who helped actually narrow in the timeline. Well, on a lot of information the police has told him. So Steve and his family are frustrated because they were the family that first came to speak. The first ones who helped actually narrow in the timeline, got access to Kaylee's phone, and really dug into it. They did everything they could to try and help push the investigation forward. Right now, he says he just doesn't feel right as a father, giving it up and leaving this up to other men. With that said, he did say that he was extremely grateful for everything the police had done for his family and the families of the other victims. Steve asked the police if it was okay if he shared some of the information that he found out on his own with the media. And the police... So that's interesting. Can he share the information he found out himself, right? And they say no. So clearly, he steered the investigation in a certain direction. Because whatever the information is that he found out, they are clearly using that information because otherwise they wouldn't care if he shared it. Um, I mean, they might care because it might be misleading, I guess, but then he wouldn't want to share it if it was misleading. So um, I'm not comfortable with how much involvement Steve has had and Things that I have found out that I am at this moment keeping to myself um, could suggest that Steve may have steered the investigation and it's not something that I found out about Steve. So that's a bit cryptic, but take it for what it's worth for now. Asked him not to, which to me is just proof that they have much more than they are sharing with us publicly. As for now, they are patiently waiting and keeping information to themselves. Steve encouraged anybody with any video or pictures, no matter how relevant, to please do so in case something is in the background, just for anything. He something is in the background, doing that car. Implored the students to come forward, even if they were scared of getting in trouble for underage drinking, potentially being in trouble at their workplace, all of these things, reiterating that it's not what police are concerned about at all. And um, interestingly as well, uh, now I don't remember what I've watched it on. I'm watching some, I've been watching a lot of old footage and the, uh, and I did, when I first saw the Banfield um, body cam footage, I didn't know that the police themselves had actually put that out there I just thought it was because you know Lana had um made lots of requests and I didn't I just didn't know why it had gone into the um mainstream media um but they wanted people to look they it wasn't they were if they if anything dodgy was going on I don't think that they would have put that video out there. So it makes me feel differently about the Banfield, what's going on with those that group of people. I don't think that they would risk putting it out if there was anything, unless they weren't aware, unless 
obviously the people in that, but they're just not aware of what's going on. But the reason they put it out was they said, if anybody notices, again, like this, anything in the background, and I swear it is to do with that car that drives past. That Whether that car's got anything to do with it or not, they think they thought it had. I think they wanted that car identified. And um, then they later walk it back and say, oh, no, it was a whatever a car. I can't remember what car they said it was. But I don't I don't necessarily believe that. I think it they could have. Um, I just don't think that you can tell very well whether it's a silver or white car. And um, whatever that car is they think that car is important. And I think I am 100% convinced and have been from the beginning that they feel that there's more than one car involved. So it wouldn't matter if that was a white Elantra or not. They have suspect vehicle one, therefore they have suspect vehicle two. And people who've tried to convince me otherwise have said, look at other PCAs. I've looked at other PCAs. They don't do that in other PCAs. There's no suspect vehicle one when there's only one suspect vehicle involved. That's not, that doesn't happen. I've looked. Um, so they, I don't know why on earth where they would leave it, the number one on. But the other thing with the PCA is I don't even think the PCA is a PCA. I am... Um, I've been reading um, articles about, written by, obviously by me, media, not recently, but saying how they get lied to so much by the police and that the police basically get them to put information out that's incomplete or incorrect. The jo George Floyd, um, I'll read you, the, I'll, I'll put this video out as well but the oh, and I'll put the article into the description but the way that the George Floyd um inc arrest occurred you wouldn't recognize it as the same thing that you saw on video this video here I might change the thumbnail I had real trouble making a decision about what to put on the thumbnail. Because you do want as many people as possible. When you've got some inform, When you have information or things that you want people to consider and um, you want to be able to attract as many people as possible to watch the video, obviously. But I do have some issue with putting um, the victims' faces on every on the cover of every video because it feels a bit I don't know what the word is but um it feels like you're taking advantage a little bit if you know what I mean um a bit gratuitous would that be the word I don't know um so these there's this is basically comparing two two PCAs and um uh, so that's I then I started looking at other PCAs because, but because this video was so unpopular I thought is there actually any point in putting it out but I really want people to look at the difference between how PCAs are usually written and it even says at the top of this so-called PCA that it's Brett Payne's statement. It doesn't say that it's a PCA. And no other PCAs say that. None of them. This is one um, for murder, uh, a PCA for homicide. Um, I just, all I've read, the beginning of it. And I don't know if they've just missed this part off and added statement by Brett Payne as a title. I don't know why they would do that, though. That seems strange oh no no i'm not good oh, here we go <sighs> sorry i've got all sniffy <clears throat> so that's better so like it begins it's got first of all it's got the heading 
probable cause affidavit. It's got a case number, state, county. The understand, and this is the word that I keep noticing, affiant, affiant. I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it. I, I feel like I've heard it before and just can't remember. The undersigned, the undersigned, affiant, my bad if it's the other way around, being a peace officer under the laws of Texas and being duly sworn on oath makes the following statements and accusations, right? It feels like there's a set way, like that kind of sentence is is something similar on all of the ones I'm looking at. My name is, and for some reason it's, it's um, <laughs> even the name of the um, officer is redacted. I am a black male. I don't know why it was necessary for this officer's race to be written in here. Maybe it is relevant. I don't know. I'm a black male, 45 years of age. My date of birth is redacted. I am employed by the Beaumont Police Department and have been for the past 14 years. I am currently assigned to the criminal investigation division as a detective. And I've also noticed that every time it's always somebody with that kind of role. Do you know what I mean? Somebody whose role is dealing with this sort of thing all, you know, that's what they do. But that's not what Brett Payne was doing on a daily basis. We've been told there hasn't even been a murder in Moscow since 2014, 2015, something like that. And so this is not, unless he's dealt with it within the military police, and that was four years previous. So it's not a recent thing, as far as we know, unless he's undercover and he's been put on, you know, he, he's been planted there or something strange like that, which, uh, which you know, I don't expect that to be the case. It just seems that they have made an odd decision, a very odd decision, considering that Dallinger, um, what's his first name? I'm just going to have to call him Dallinger, I can't. It's just slipped my mind. Um, he is a sergeant. So why, and that's above a corporal, so why is why was he not the lead detective? He actually... I mean, I don't know if he had something else that he had to do when he was with Nunes and Corbin Smith and, God, what's his first name? Oh, that pissed me off when that happens, which happens all the time. Whatever his name is, Dallinger. I want to say Jeffrey Dahmer. I don't know why. It's not Jeffrey Dallinger. Um, he was he was apparently I thought it was just two of them and then more recently I heard Dallinger mentioned and that made my ears prick up because I'm I'm not sure about him and there's something I'm not so keen on about him if I must if I have to be honest um and he's a sergeant I'm gonna double check that I'm doubting myself now I'm, I'm but I'm a doubter I'm a self-doubter, so don't take that as meaning anything. I'm probably I'm probably right. <laughs> I don't sound like a self-doubter, do I? Um, I'm probably right. Um, okay, it is the belief of this affiant, okay, the, that word again, and he hereby charges and accuses that, and this bit is important, that they actually say what the person is accused of. That Now, let's see what name it is. Jared, uh, oh, oh, I bet this, I bet it was important to them that this officer was black because the person being arrested is black. So that's why that's been, because otherwise, what, what, why, why do we know, need to know what someone's race is, the officer's race is, right? So they can prove it's not a racist thing. Um, the, that Jared, Jared, Javon Bias, um, the date of birth of, and then the address, has committed the offence of capital murder. Where does it say that on that PCA that we've seen? It should say what, what the charge is. 
1903 PC. Why does it say 1903? Uh, a first degree felony that occurred on or about, here we go, the 6th of June 2017 in Bowman, Jefferson County, Texas. A fiant has probable cause for said belief by reason of the following facts. So all that bit, I mean, maybe they've just cut that out, but I I don't like them having cut that out. And I don't like there just being the title, Brett Payne's statement at, at the beginning. Unless there's a, a copy that I haven't seen that has got this all at the top. But I, I got mine from the New York Post website. And I would have thought they would have included whatever was given to them. Anthony Dallinger, he's a flipping captain now. So why couldn't Captain Dallinger have... Maybe Captain Dallinger... Um, well, it is, I don't know what's going on with them calling Brett Payne the lead detective because it's supposed to be the arresting detective who writes the PCA. Correction, arresting officer, my bad. I don't know if the lead detective and the the arresting detective are supposed to be the same person. I've got a feeling that there was somebody completely different who's nothing to do with um, MPD that probably was dealing with all this and that they've just given us... I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know if my mind's just running wild now because there just seem to be too many. Once you there are cracks, once you realise that they've changed one thing, they've changed the room that Dylan was in once people discovered that she wasn't in that room, they've changed the year of the car, they've changed the time of the crime. Once the goalposts start moving, what can you trust? If I, what would you say to me if my boyfriend cheated on me once, then cheated on me again, then cheated on me again? Would you recommend that I trust anything that comes out of his mouth? Because they, there's three that I've just mentioned and, there's, and we all know there's more, three things that have started as one thing and changed to another thing inexplicably and yet and yet people still do have blind faith it's, it's absolutely I think it's understandable for people who are not really into this case like people who've just you know they don't just don't you know they just know the general news and haven't paid that much attention they're just not interested in true crime or this case and they've just that's more understandable because they just won't have paid much attention to the details and they won't realize the significance of this sort of thing and and some people it's not not necessarily blind faith it's just lack of interest um whereas other people they just believe that the, the police are the good guys they and that it doesn't matter how they get to where they get to and and I guess at one point I thought I mean I used to love I mean I was a kid to be fair but I used to love my army vice the A team absolutely loved the A team I was the biggest fan ever I even had an A team sweatshirt and stickers of the A team all over my bed absolutely obsessed but you know the Mavericks the people, and that was it all in the 80s, wasn't it? You'd see police who, um, and I, I know they're, they're soldiers of the fortune, not police, but but you see people who are bending the rules and, you know, they get their guy and it doesn't matter how they get them. And, and but then, because I've seen so many wrongful arrests, wrongful convictions... It's really opened my eyes massively. It's just it's just horrendous. It's just scary. And I think um like kudos to people that haven't seen 
like looked into that side of things and still um, are critical and don't just lap it all up and are um, more just those who are open-minded and sceptical, good for them, um, because it wasn't until I had, I've l- listened to the Wrongful Conviction podcast, which has case after case after case after case after case of wrongful convictions, um, Jason Flom, um, and he's not, he's not been wrongfully convicted, he's the host, um, and just other cases just started off with the innocent what was it i confession tapes i think it was called and it was watching that that i think i was kind of like god some of these they seem really dodgy cases i'm not sure about this um And then I just looked more and more into it and I was like, oh my God, it's just crazy. But yeah, why didn't old Dallinger, why he's captain? I don't know if he's sergeant that year. I don't know if he's become a captain. He might have done since, I think. I feel like he was a sergeant from when I read the annual report. I think he might have been a sergeant that year, 2022. But either way, he's senior. So what was he doing? Why couldn't he be the lead investigator? something to do with the military i'm flipping telling you it is something to do with the military something to do with brett payne's knowledge and expertise i think 